Fine-grained sedimentary rocks, when they deform under low-grade metamorphic conditions, can form confusing structures. Are these folds of original bedding or of a later deformation fabric? And what about all these veins? Quartz veining is really common in these slaty rocks, reflecting fluid fluxes as the host rock lost its pore waters, so dissolution and reprecipitation is the norm. Well, let's examine some examples in outcrops from a belt of Variscan deformation in southwest England. Structures formed in rather fine grained, slaty, lower Devonian, deep water strata. But first, some tectonic context for our field laboratory. We'll be looking at rocks on the coast north of Start Point, around the settlements of Hall Sands, B Sands and Tor Cross. The southern part of this view is taken by metamorphic former oceanic rocks of the so-called Start Complex. Our outcrops are made from deep water sediments of the Lower Devonian Midfoot group. The boundary between the two is a fundamental tectonic lineament, the Start Perimporth line. So let's look at the rocks along this tectonic boundary before looking at the Midfoot group. The coast is a popular tourist destination in summer, but its structural geology, well, that's hardly published. Anyway, let's go to Hall Sands. The far side of the bay, well, that's Start Point and its terrain of former oceanic rocks. Let's check out the near side of the bay. These are difficult rocks, clearly sedimentary in origin, but beds where recognizable are discontinuous. So some geologists call these broken formations. So it's quite a jumbled mess of stuff down here. Let's go and have a look and see what it comprises. So this is one unit within the broken formation. It consists of all sorts of little microbrechic class that are all broken, sitting in a matrix. So that's Fashy's one. So this is Fashy's two. Very foliated, isn't it? But it's still got fragments in it. These little rafts of bits of vein, that's fine. But they're little discontinuous rafts of sandstone beds in here as well. So this is collectively a broken formation. Rafts of sandstone beds and other units. So are these various sedimentary debrites the products of submarine landslides or the products of near surface faulting now reworked and folded together along the start parent fourth fault zone. This is a topic for future research perhaps. So these are the rocks that lie on the contact between the start point rocks and the rest of the Devonian that lies further up the coast. It's a major tectonic contact. So we'll head into the Meadfoot group beds to the north, away from these enigmatic broken formation rocks. At face value, these look simple, very thinly laminated sedimentary rocks, quite slaty with veins. But let's start by finding thicker bedded units, like this beige sandstone. Beds like this are folded, here, into an antiform. So let's look at this fold and its fabrics. 
which are better developed in the adjacent finer grained or politic strata. So you can trace out the sedimentary boundary, the edge of the sandstone. And here's the axial trace of the antiform. So how do the fabrics relate to this? Starting on the left hand limb. The cleavage bedding is symmetry defines a vergence and we can compare this with the other limb where predictably the vergence switches. Finally the antiform hinge and here the vergence is neutral. So let's put this together. The cleavage is working in the fold in a classical fashion as indeed are the minor folds developed on the buckled interface. So, all good so far. Let's now look at another folded sandstone bed. The interface here is quite irregular. Let's look at a small part of this. It displays bulbous cuspate and pinched in forms, and these relate to the rocks on either side of the interface. The sandstone shows more cuspate forms, so it's behaving more competently than the finer grained dark politic rocks below. So a really nice illustration of how a competence contrast controls the nature of the interface during buckling. All of this is pretty classical. The folding and cleavage fabrics look to relate simply to one another in classical fashion. But is it always this straightforward? Well, in fine grained sandstone units like this, these types of deformation fabrics are quite common. You can see this main fabric running along like this, and at first sight it looks like bedding. But actually, bedding's this. So that's one unit here, the lighter grey and the darker grey is another. So this fabric here is cleavage. If you really zoom in on it, you can see that actually there's a sandier bit and a finer grain component to the cleavage. So the cleavage, it's spaced and defines a new location fabric. You only recognize it as such by finding the original bedding trace through here. So as I said, a really common type of deformation in low grade uh, rocks that are sandstones, very fine sandstones like this. Here's another example of these fabrics. We can trace out the foliation once and many times. Notice these foliations deflect as they cross the pale, thin, sandy layer. This type of refraction is often the only way to recognise the original bedding. Zoom in and the sandy layers look to be reforming into the orientation of the space cleavage, a process termed transposition, a new location fabric defined by thinned, spaced dissolution seams, the tectonic foliation. Of course, once we recognise and interpret this, we can use the geometry to deduce the cleavage vergence. So, the result of all this deformation is a thinly banded rock with a strong planar anisotropy. So in highly anisotropic rocks like this, well, they fold like this. band structures, really spectacular. These kinky structures are commonly formed in rocks with planar anisotropy. In this case, the anisotropy is not primary bedding, but is itself a deformation fabric. So the kink bands are secondary, later deformation structures to the folds and the foliation that we've seen so far, though how much earlier we can't say. It could be part of a progressive, continuous deformation history.
So what's the message? Well, when looking at rocks like this, the first thing to do is find definitive bedding and then see how the deformation fabrics that cut this bedding are developed. In this case, a spaced cleavage. Watch out for transposition. Don't simply assume that the most obvious banding is the bedding. And once the origin of the fabrics is established, the other structures, like these kinks, can be analysed appropriately. Detailed structural studies on these rocks have yet to be completed. But we can perhaps provisionally tie these structures into a larger context and the start Perrinporth line. So I'm just north of Start Point. Some really nice folds and vein arrays. We can use these to work out the kinematics of the deformation here. Let's have a go at that. With care, we can find folds of primary bedding lamination. Let's trace this out, like this, and over here, and construct the axial traces. These folds, seen in profile, imply broadly north-south contraction. But that's not all. So far, we've rather ignored the veins, but they're useful here as they're deformed and strung out. To examine these, let's spin round and look down on the outcrop in plan view. So the deformation fabric is steeply dipping and strikes east-west. We can pick out one disrupted vein. It's offset by little shears, here shown in red with these senses of offset. Other veins show similar deformation. So the offset deformed veins imply this sense of broadly strike slip shear. Let's look at other shear criteria, starting down here. Foliation sets are weakly boudinaged, nicked and thinned locally. The asymmetry of the boudinage is like this. And this too implies a bulk shear sense like this. Finally, for now, we can look up here. And the main foliation shows little deformation shears picked in red. These are shear bands and imply this bulk shear sense. So all these shear sense indicators are consistent, giving this overall sense. So the rocks have been flattened this way, but they've also been sheared like this, that's dextral, running off in that direction there. So combined deformation uh, makes these folds and these rather nice little sheared vein arrays. Now, if we step back, we've seen lots of folding of the rocks of the Meadfoot group, which, if represented in plan view by strain ellipses, implies substantial north-south shortening. And the shear criteria we've just seen indicate dextral east-west shearing. Put these together, and the area represents a zone of dextral transpression. After a quick look like this, it's time to measure up the folds and fabrics, to look for variations, and to get to grips with the kinematics. There's a whole lot of coastal outcrop to play with, but that's for another day. So this is a pretty nice coastline for looking at structural geology. 